Sir, what, what, you don't think we can hit one hour? I think we can hit one hour. Sassian in the chat room says one hour. Seriously? Well, once I get talking, there's no stopping. So <laughs> two hours. Let's go. Um, <gasps> oh, dear God. Then start your timers. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 115 for Thursday, the 16th of February, 2016. This is a show where two lifelong friends talk about geek shit and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and Kent. Who the hell do we have with us tonight, man? Man, we got our good friend Clyde Harvey, aka Poodle Puncher from Chat Realm. Oh, that's me. Up? Hey, what's going on? Did, did you did you not know you were here today? Did you not? I I thought I thought I was just hanging out. I, oh, I, you didn't know? Well, that's pretty much what <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He, he's, no, he, it, it, it's awesome. He it's, stopped yeah, by for a live show and ended up being the live show. I see how it is. A- absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Did, did anybody start a timer? Like this, this, this. Make sure we do this right. Twenty one oh nine is the time right now. Oh, see, I like this guy. He's military. I like it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> we'll so, get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's just how we roll. Hey, man. Um, we got. Let's let's not bury the lead. Okay. Um, what do we got going on for South by South by Southwest in Austin, oh, Texas? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's go ahead and let's go from, ahead and knock from, this out okay. from about the eighth until the fifteenth. Although the fifteenth will be a null day because that's our flyout day. Um, we'll be there. Uh, and we're not going to do anything. We're not we're not going to show up at any parties. We're not doing uh, uh, any sign up things. We're not gonna. We're not gonna do any Diamond Club stuff at all. It's just. <laughs> it's just gonna be we're us. Just gonna hang out at our Airbnb. That's yeah, it. yeah. They get a nice porch. I mean, we're gonna say it's. We're just gonna <laughs> hang out right there. It's gonna be cool. No, nah, man, that's all bullshit. Oh, we're is it? Be there. We're gonna be there in full force. In fact, anybody that's gonna be in Austin on the ninth, which is Thursday, kind of like the the big kickoff uh, of South by before South by actually starts. Right. Uh, the 9th of March at 4 p.m., we are going to have a Diamond Club meetup at Darwin's Pub on 6th Street. Yep. That's where, that's where our meetup was last year. It's a little earlier it, this it, year, though. Yeah, a little bit earlier this year. In time We made day. arrangements with CJ, the proprietor of, of Darwin's, and we're going to be there from probably about 4 to 7 that evening. And we're just and, gonna we're just gonna be sitting around eating chicken wings and and uh, and uh, pizza, right? Because that's what they have there: chicken wings and pizza. And uh, Phil, they have a Philly cheesesteak. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. that's it. That's all we're doing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, oh, oh, I, 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 shit! No, that's not all we're doing. Oh no. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah. At at uh, at five o'clock, we're going to put on the first ever RMP live show. Oh shit! Wait, wait. We're live now though. Yeah, but like live in person, like IRL show. You you actually want to be in the same room with people? Well, well see, I, I it, thought the whole reason we do this is so we don't actually have to well, interact with real the, people. Here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, it's been a while since me and Kent hung out. So oh, yeah. it's been like yeah. since since February or something like that. So like last year. Um, no, yeah, I was gonna say like. Uh, so so what we want to do is we want to reintegrate the friendship with people we don't want to just be like because otherwise it'd just be me and him staring at each other like i don't know how to talk to you without the skype i I, it's like i i talk to you every week uh what are we i already Um, know what's going on so Um, yeah we're gonna be there four to seven uh there might be a little bit of rescheduling a little charades there with some of the time thing time constraints but we're gonna be there from four to seven period dot end of story we yep, are going yep, yep. to be doing a, a a live show in person. Um, we are going to have some swag. We're going to have some gifts, at least a few gifts for for some people. We're going to have some uh, audience participation. Dark Redeemer threw out some ideas at us because we were at a stillmate and holy shit, we rocked it and we got a good <laughs> show lined up, and it's going to be awesome. I uh, hope you come out. And of course, once uh, I, I I joke now, but I'm going to be dead serious later. Once the show's over, we're going to pack all our shit in a backpack and hope not to lose it while we do the pub crawl. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I've got to give you guys credit because I think at this point, Night Attack still doesn't have anything figured out, right? Um, that's standard. Yeah, that's. I, yeah, it, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, actually, you, you guys have. If you if you're gonna if you're gonna look level. at it if you're gonna look at it like that, we're actually losing because we did things early enough to plan. 
Um, the, the whole point of the game is to do things as late as possible and still have people show and up. And see who shows up. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, if, yeah. if you post it tonight and people show up tomorrow, those are your real fans, right? <laughs> that, that, that's the Yeah, well, the if, if, if we tell them about it today and it happened yesterday, those are the real fans. That's how it works out. <laughs> 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 or the stalkers. Whichever way you want to look at it, man. It's like we're not picky. <laughs> um, but yeah, we we, uh, we we got some great stuff plan- planned up. Um, we are... Uh, oh man, we're we're hoping not to fall on our face. So come on out and watch that disaster happen live in person at yes. Darwin's Pub on Sixth Street in Austin, from four to There's- seven p.m. Uh, on the ninth Thursday, the ninth of March. Yes, and uh, yeah. there's bring, a really bring your, good chance bring... that you'll walk away with some some sort of swag, yep. either um, some DC TV or RMP specific swag. Uh, we got some new T-shirts on the way. We've got stickers coming um man exciting times yeah it's a big deal um, be there. So, Austin. so be there and witness the disaster unfold that's all we're gonna say <laughs> now so how's your week clyde <laughs> oh this week uh, this I no- has I been noticed... like the stupidest week uh i, I mean because kn- I noticed in the show notes you don't have anything in there. Like, is maybe it's too oh, traumatic? I forgot to put that in there because that's <laughs> that's how this week has been. It's like the uh, my my company was acquired and they took over ownership while I was away at CES, and then I got back and we had nothing to do all of January. We had nothing to do because all projects were canceled, nothing was planned, and then this week everything just like dumped. And it's like everything's broken. <laughs> oh yeah! By the way, this was due the second week of January. Why isn't it done? Yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. Right. And right. I mean, we still we we still have no information on what we what we need to do as far as integrating into the new company, which sucks because our infrastructure is amazing and theirs is like non-existent. But we somehow have to come back well, down to their standard. Now you oh. know why they bought you out. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, <laughs> dude, they literally have all of their network subnets in like Excel spreadsheets, but not one Excel spreadsheet, like multiple Excel spreadsheets. Are they cross linked? Yeah, I have no idea. They won't. They won't <laughs> tell us any of that. We use Infoblox, so everything's in a central location, managed, perfect. It nice. works. Nice, but uh, yeah. Um, my week consisted primarily of teaching airmen how to air force. <laughs> <laughs> no, gr- oh granted, God. I am not, and people that know me will know this. I am not the best air forcer. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I did this weekend was teach people how to air force. And it's not hard so to air you, force. It's really not hard. Uh, you were, were you forcing your brand of air force on them? Uh, no, luckily I've got some really great NCOs under, under me. And uh, so, so I was more the they act as a buffer. They can act as yeah, a buffer. Yeah, exactly, between. exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I I filter the shit down. They uh, they filter the chaos up. So, um. So, so do you? Let me let me just ask you. Do you when you're teaching them to air force, do you teach them how to get past the cord that's on the floor when they're rolling across on their desk chair? It, it, you, is there like a maneuver, like a hop, or do you have to actually get up and? Uh, we, we we call it the Navy hop because at least oh, we know okay. what the ground feels like. Everybody just leans, you know. Yeah. <laughs> For those oh, that don't man. know, Clyde is a Navy veteran, so there might be some little Navy versus Air Force. <laughs> <laughs> and I and I believe we were we were in about the same time. So yeah. Yep. Actually, yeah, 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 you, yeah. you uh you came in just before we or just after we did, and it, because we came in ninety five. And, uh, well, of course there it is. So, um, uh, I, I spent a couple weeks, a couple, well, I must, I spent a lot of hours a few weeks ago, uh, trying to learn some Linux and refreshing my, my memory on what little I already knew and then trying to expand that. And that was the whole causal thing you've got in here that you also had a nice little romp through Linux land. I had to teach myself to Linux was my exact <laughs> words. And, um, Going into this, I and, and mind you, I did take a college class on Linux, and I got out of that three things. The slashes go the wrong way. 
Pseudo and LS, right? Those are the only thing I remember. Okay. I'm using Debian. There is no pseudo, which no. I found out. And it took me like two hours of fighting with it before I searching on the internet to find out, oh no, it's just SU for switch user. Yeah. There is no pseudo. Yeah. Like, but yeah. yeah no, when, it when, took you, me. And, and then once you, if you log into root as root, it just like half the time you're scared because you're going to do something that you didn't mean to do and there's no stopping it because you're logged in as root and it's just like, oh, this isn't good. Well, yeah. And I mean, because the install went great. Uh, they've gotten it to the point where I just put in the disks. It ran. It brought me up to a graphical uh, like interface. I logged in with the user and then I couldn't do anything. Tried to log in as the administrator root. No. <laughs> Tried to create an administrator it said, oh, you have to create the password on the, or you'll put in the password on the first login, right? So you log out, you try to log in as that new administrator, and it won't let you log in because you don't have a password. <laughs> and then finally, I, I realized after, uh, after I reinstalled it and told it not to install the graphical user interface, I uh, was able to actually do something. And yeah, it, it took me several days, but now I've got, now I, I've I've successfully installed it like four times and configured it so that I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Repetition, right? For the for the next one. All to run a single wireless controller. <laughs> That's the only thing. This computer is just gonna sit on top of a cabinet in a corner and never be touched ever again, except through the the browser to the wireless controller. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's amazing. Um, so, my, my only Linux experience to date was probably a decade or more ago when I installed a uh, an Ubuntu uh, disk that I had, and I I fucked around with it for like a week or something like that. That that's the extent of my Linux. Um, I my the, my my Linux knowledge goes into the fact that I pronounce both of those differently than you two did. <laughs> because it's Debian <laughs> and uh which one were you saying, Kent? Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Oh, Ubuntu. Or, Ubuntu. Yeah. Ubuntu. However, however the hell you say that word. Ubuntu. <laughs> yeah. Um Well it's yeah. I, I don't know because the cause the server that I have now runs in CentOS and or CentOS or Cintos or Cintos or <laughs> fuck, they need to standardize something, right? Well, um, and, the, and the funny thing, oh, oh, I was going to, sorry. Uh, the, the funny thing is at work, the Linux guys sit on the other side of the cube wall from me. And I sit there all day and listen to them fight amongst themselves <laughs> about Red Hat versus this. And, well, if we were using this, but if we were using that, then this and this. And then they're just like screaming. And then someone says something about Solaris and then they all lose their shit. And it's, and I'm just sitting there like Cisco. <laughs> man, that's all I care about. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, um, can't you went and see the movie? How'd that go? Oh, dude. Okay, the Lego Batman movie. Yeah, I was like, oh, come on. I mean, the Lego movie was cool, and then you know, of course, I like Batman. But do we really need a Lego Batman movie? Like, uh, and okay. the answer is yes. That movie <laughs> is delightful. <laughs> this weekend, go see that movie. I'm not even kidding. That that movie is fantastic. As soon as it started, I got a grin on my face, and it pretty much stayed there for the next hour and forty minutes. It was fantastic. And I tell you what, if you if you plan to go see this movie and you have never watched the nineteen sixties Batman series, do that first. Like mm. just even if you just go to YouTube and 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 catch an episode or some highlights or something like that, familiarize yourself with that. You will get way more jokes. So it's, it's, it's wonderful. I'm just curious, but is this the first Lego character movie to actually be in theaters? Because I know they've done like Lego Avengers and Lego everything up until this point. You can find it on Netflix and Hulu and whatnot. But yes, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, they did the Lego movie. Was it last year? I think. Yeah, right. But that was yeah, just or a, a couple years, two then, years ago. Yeah, or two years ago. Yeah, there's that, and then. Uh, Lego Batman, and then they've got forthcoming is Lego Ninjago the movie. Right. Um, they're currently the the, the oh, Lego sorry. the Lego games. If you've ever played those, they're 
especially their cutscenes and stuff like that. It's cinematic quality. Like it, they put a lot of, it's really awesome. And the way they they can animate, I've always been impressed with how they can animate and build sets and everything else with you know a Lego appearing textures. Because you know you know damn well they don't have all those Legos in the set. Nobody nobody has those. But they make everything look Lego, and it's just great. It's it's amazing how they do that. Did did Will Ferrell make an appearance in this one? Uh, I'm not gonna say. Okay. Oh. Spoilers. <laughs> no, no, no spoiling for you. Um, so we we were talking about movies, and I am now required by law to uh, to pour my beer <laughs> because that's just the it's kind a local of show statue. This is. Um, and uh, so so that makes uh, two things that we geek out about because Poodle Puncher, you're you're a bit of a, mo- a movie guy. And Kent, you're a bit of a beer guy. Now, mm-hmm. I, on the other hand, and th- and this is just to show that this show, this show is here to celebrate all geeks. Whatever it is that you geek out about, we're here for you. Like we want to celebrate that shit too, no matter what it is. And uh, uh, you know, there's certain things like fuck off, right? But uh, but you <laughs> you know what those are, and you, you're on the dark web doing that shit. Anything else? We're here to celebrate it. And I'm just gonna say that I opened. My beer with my Alaska Brewing Company uh, pick. All right. And now, and I, I, I would have used it if I'd remembered and washed it. But here they have the Alaskan Brewing Company Iditarod glasses. I am a swag geek. Yes, you this are. This is the <laughs> shit that I fucking love. Right you here. You are a swag whore. I, I, I love this crap, man. I, I love this shit. It, like why why wouldn't I I mean why? Why wouldn't I? It's it's amazing. <laughs> it's it's functional. Like I can use this. This isn't just something that's gonna sit on the shelf. This will actually get used. And it was less Poodle, than two was, bucks. Poodle, it was probably about a month ago. Amos went to a beer festival and instead of talking about all of the amazing beers that he tried, he's like, Look, and I got this glass <laughs> and this poster and, and this th- shirt. This glass. And- <laughs> I got this glass right here. So if you like swag, I will give you this. When I was at CES last year, a guy hand just handed this to me standing in a line. He was like, I don't know, here. What it is, if you can't tell, it's a bottle opener that's a credit card shape. So you can put it in your wallet. Yes. That is and money. And then you're like, oh, you just I, I remember, you know, traveling around the world. You you go to these weird European countries and they don't have twist off bottles. I had to learn how to open a bottle using my skateboard. <laughs> and ah, that's and, awesome. Well, with, the, uh, <laughs> with, the, with the truck bolt right there? Well, it was right underneath the hanger. And then, uh, funny enough, when I got back to the States, this would have been 98, uh, that brand of trucks started advertising that you could use them as a bottle opener. <laughs> I was like, I figured that out. But we, this was kind of before the internet. So, so, some uh, P, some PR bitch saw you do that in uh, in Germany or something like that. And like, oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Um, now he's a millionaire. Yeah, exactly. And you're still opening beers with your skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, that's that's one thing that I'm really looking forward to at South by is just the random swag. Like I, I don't go searching for swag when I'm there, but I am definitely picking up every little bit of it that I can find when I'm there. Like I'm not gonna go somewhere because they got cool swag, but once I'm once I'm somewhere, give me all the stuff. Oh yeah, give me all. I stuff. want that and, swag. And in fact, give me that damn swag. <laughs> well, that that that's the thing I love about uh like going to CES is you'll walk by a booth and they'll be like, hey. Come sit if you're willing to come sit in this air conditioned room in a reclining chair and watch this movie for five minutes. We'll give you this t shirt. It's like you had me an air conditioned room in a recliner, but sure. All right, so <laughs> and, um, good. Oh, good. Uh, I, I was gonna say that uh, uh, this would be the third show in a row, like, like it's a, it's a trend at this point. Uh, third show in a row, we're gonna talk about Richard Gunther. Not that we're not oh, that we're, not that we're fans or anything, and I never mentioned it before, and I and I I don't know where I put them. They're probably up in my closet upstairs. Richard Gunther stopped by the CNET booth and display and party or whatever at CES, got a pair of red CNET sp- socks, and m- mailed them to me after seeing after CES. Uh, 
because <laughs> he and I met at a Buzz Out Loud meetup. So he he thought that'd be awesome, and it's totally bitching. Like it's it's one of my favorite little swag gifts ever. It's it's earned a place in my wall whenever I get my shit fixed out. But yeah, I never mentioned it before. I don't think. And man, it was it was awesome. Really kick ass and and shit like that, dude. Like that's it was awesome. And uh, yeah, I just want to say that real quick because we're talking about swag, and I hadn't mentioned it before. That was like four awesome things all in one little story. That's Very cool. that's what happens. That's what happens. Um, and now it's time for some of this awesomeness. What'd you oh, watch, Amos? Alrighty. Um, I got uh, uh, Rives, Rives, Rives. I got a name I can't pronounce. Um, and, and first of all, if you, if, if you only have one name, like fuck off. I just <laughs> like um, the four a.m. mystery. This talk was an exercise in coincidence. It's not. Uh, he 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 walks you through a narrative with a bunch of completely inane events that are all tied into this time four a.m. and it, and of course he draw he draws the story into a circle so it looks like it loops back and it's really interesting how he weaves it together it's it was fun like it was it was joking and humorous the entire time um, and it was like I said it's an exercise in coincidence there is no scientific fact to draw from it or anything else just a bunch of bunch of stuff like so and so died on th- uh, on this date on that date so and so was born or so and so album was released on that album was a song called 4AM and also on the album was like this year you know and you go back to that year and that year is like when the first person was born that you know it, it, so and it was just it was fun to watch didn't really get anything out of it other than uh, of course the obvious message of you know causation and correlation um aren't the same but or cause correlation is not equal causation um but yeah it was fun i mean if you're if you're looking for a like a, a six minute ted talk or whatever that's that's fun to watch go ahead cruise through it nice man so i found this one and i picked it be- simply because of the title it's called the cockroach beatbox <laughs> i saw and this was, and, it, I, and i almost watched it i, I was intrigued by oh, that oh it was <laughs> fantastic it was it was put out there by a neuroscientist called greg gage see since i have to say the name i picked one with an easy pronounceable name anyway so greg gage brings some cockroaches onto the stage and puts them in a bowl of ice water to numb them so that people didn't think that he was hurting these roaches uh then he proceeds to rip the leg off of one of them and what he was demonstrating was how neurons work and the correlation of like how sound is like electricity and all this other crap. So he basically electrifies this this uh, cockroach leg and shows how sound can make the the nerves react. Hmm. So he played a song and the the leg was twitching to the beat of this song. And then he had a guy come up and beatbox, and the, like the leg was getting down. You really, really have to watch this TED talk. It's Greg Gage, the cockroach beatbox. Check it out. It sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Huh. Uh, so, Clyde, I heard a rumor that you've given a TED talk. Wait. Yeah, wait, that, wait. that's what some people think. Wait, there. Um, this is this is okay. So last time, last time it was bullshit. Our, our guests don't do TED Talks. It's complete bullshit. This is... Uh, I don't care who you think Brian Brushwood is. He He's not a, not a fucking TED Talker. Like, you know, he he did like... The, he, he, got a, he, he got on stage at a TED event, and they were, like, recording and shit. But it wasn't like a TED Talk, though, right? I mean, that's... Well, actually, uh, here's the thing. Uh, a, couple, uh, a while back, I got an email from TED saying, Hey, we want you to do a talk for TEDx. At the port of Spain. Number one, I said, wait, what? And number two, where the hell is port of Spain? (laughs) So funny story. There is a guy. He is a, a, uh, a Catholic priest works at a college down in Trinidad. His name is Clyde Harvey. I get all of his email. 
<laughs> all of it. And I can tell you firsthand that number one, he never shows up to meetings. <laughs> number two, he never returns his uh, library books. And I can also tell you at one point who was failing at that college or, or was and about to be expelled due to their grades with all of their personal information. Oh my and, God. Yeah. And uh, the, you know, and let, let me just show you, cause I mean, there is a striking resemblance between us. Uh, if you look, I mean, we oh. look exactly the same. Oh, right. You're, you're <laughs> doppelganger. I, I know. You're doppelganger. Um, I know, right? I, I, I'm call, uh, once again, I'm calling bullshit. Uh, your hair's longer. <laughs> like, yeah, clearly. Yeah. Well, Maybe you've just grown yeah. it out since then, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, um, I mean, because I don't normally do the TED Talk thing because uh, a lot of them, a lot of the people that I've seen when I've done it have always been kind of, you know, just, uh, I don't know. Up, up people, yeah, kind of. But but this one was actually rather interesting. I You know, I figured, hey, I, I want to know what TED Talk they had me do. And uh, he, he did uh, this talk. It, it, it was titled <laughs> All of Us Are Guilty. And uh, essentially, it looks at social problems as a whole and how, you know, everybody wants to point fingers, but it's really all of us have a play in everything that's going on, you know, and and he, he makes the point that, yeah, a lot of you went out recently and. Uh, participated in protests and, you know, whatnot. But when the protest was over, you went home, you felt good about yourself, but then what did you do? Right, right. Nothing. I mean, did you, everybody has a responsibility um, to, uh, to shape our society as a whole. And, uh, and, and he, I, I won't go too deep into it, but I mean, he talked a lot about how there's things that, shouldn't be happening um but nobody's really taking it upon themselves to you know stop that and a lot of, and a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're really limiting words that people can use we're neutering the language and forcing people into a hold uh, that where you don't get out of you know you stay where you're comfortable and you just go well that's not a, that's not affecting me so I'm I'm just over here. So but, uh, this, this okay. goes this goes along with a conversation Kent and I have had uh, offline about about protests and social change and all that, and that it, it you know it's great you gather twenty thousand people into a park and you know uh, screw the Smurfs screw the Smurfs you know and you're totally anti Smurf. But it doesn't mean anything until there's a threat of force behind it, and that force can be, uh, it can be ranged from it, from riots to Gargamel, sanctions. It could be Azrael. <laughs> but yeah. there has to be a threat of action, I guess, not just force, but action. Mm -hmm. A threat of action behind it before anybody will ever pay attention to anything. Uh, uh, Gandhi yelling in a park, nobody cares. You know, someone actually breaking in to a building and lighting it on a fire so people have to come in there and see what secrets are held inside. You've got someone's attention. Yeah. Somewhere in between those two, you find where activity and activism can actually make change without being destructive. Because that's, mm -hmm. I mean, nobody, nobody wants that to start with. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's not be violent and destructive. Step one. Let's it, nuke says the military em. guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, no, if you're going to be violent and destructive, you do it someplace else where it doesn't affect your uh, thing. But <laughs> so, so, the, mean, but so the Chicago rioters should go down to Atlanta. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Hell in someone else's city. <laughs> that's what Americans are good at. <laughs> and that's just the party on Friday nights in Korea. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, right? Oh anyway, god. um yeah, this is a once you start talking about how how we use language and how we restrict language, then you really have my attention on something like this. So this is something I'm this is one I'm definitely going to watch after the show. Yeah, and he, he he didn't go really far into the language side, but he did talk about accountability and responsibility 
and you know um, how the things that you do if they're done someplace else. Yeah, like the well, point he said is you know o- Obama uh, had orders bombs to be dropped in another country. It's it doesn't affect him directly, so you know he doesn't feel guilty. And it's it, the whole point was to make you kind of take uh, a self, uh, uh, basically look at yourself and identify the things that you should feel guilty about. The things that you do on a regular basis that, you know, you should feel guilty about and uh, and basically address that. A tone isn't the right word, but you know something along those lines. Right, it's like fix your behavior, uh, yeah. whether it's whether it's action or inaction. I th- I think all of us are guilty of inaction. Oh, absolutely, um, and, and that that was one of the things is uh you know there's things going on uh and you don't do anything about it you are guilty. I mean maybe that's one of the things you're guilty about is not speaking up, not uh you know taking action, not helping somebody. It doesn't have to be like actual crimes or bad morality kind of stuff, you know, like, which is where people automatically go when you say guilty. Right. Yeah. Stop murdering people. Well, I mean, I never murdered anybody. It was Saturday. I I don't uh, like, you know, what you're supposed to do. If I was blackout drunk, does it matter? (laughs) Should I feel guilty about something? I don't remember. You time traveled right past that event. (laughs) <laughs> didn't happen in your um, timeline. <laughs> something I want to add to this, and this is something I really believe in: indecision is an action. Oh, absolutely! Like by choosing not to take a side, or choosing not to learn about the issue, or choosing not to understand the other side of the issue. All of those are actions. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so, no matter what's going on, nobody is is. I don't I wouldn't say nobody's innocent, but nobody is inactive because you're choosing to be inactive and therefore choosing a side and choosing a morality and a stance on the issue, no matter what the issue is. So the least you can do is learn about it and understand why you feel the way you do and why you mm-hmm. feel that others should feel that way. Yep. Oh, yeah. So uh, on it's, with the uh, the on with the show. Now that we're done with the ser- serious stuff, because. No, nobody likes the serious stuff, except for yeah. I'm done with the serious yeah. stuff. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. So now comes the part of the show where uh, inside baseball here. Even though I don't watch baseball, I still understand what the term means, which is weird in and of itself. Um. There's <laughs> like just, I, don't, I don't even know where that came from. Uh, sports ball. Sports ball. Um, <laughs> Usually, if we have a big topic, we'll talk about it. But if we don't, we just decide to sit here and stare at our guests until they start talking. Yeah, I, I, I can actually, sit here and stare all night. I, <laughs> all right, I've got I've got two things that I wanted to talk to to Poodle about. Uh, one, which we'll get to second, is his Navy career. I wanted to learn a little bit about what he did in the military and stuff like that. But first, we got to get to the bottom of your name, dude. We got to know. Where Poodle Puncher came from. Now, now, before, wait, wait, hold wait, on, wait. Before we dig into where you imagine it from, we 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 decided to do a little research on our own. So yes, we yes, okay. we dug into it a little bit, and um, we found a a very, I don't want to say disturbing, just because we're not here to judge. We're not here to judge anybody for anything. It's 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 whatever. We love everyone. Yeah, we're we're all about including everyone except for uh child rapists. I mean, that's pretty much where we draw the line. Um well, that's a good line to draw. Yeah, it, 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 and, you yeah, know, and, and that's definitely on the other side of the line. Yeah, so, somewhere, you know, so somewhere between uh who, who gives a shit and and child rapists is our line that we draw that we just <laughs> we we can't endorse any, anywhere beyond. Um so we did find a definition uh for poodle puncher and I want I want to I want to show this real quick. And I'm going to read it. Um, and wow, that, that didn't work out at all. <laughs> That's, uh, that, that was unfortunate. So I'm just going to read it because apparently I, I can't show anything today. Uh, poodle puncher, according to the urban dictionary is one, one who has a sex fetish with the family pet. Can't you want to do the next okay. one here? Um, yeah, sure. So definition number two of poodle puncher is 
beating the shit out of one's dog. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, okay. I mean, there's still one left. There's still one left. One who loves doggy style then cracks her in the back of the nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> so what exactly is a nugget in this definition? I believe it because would be the cranial because organ. that would be a donkey punch, would it not? Uh, Where you punch her in the back of the head, which I I I, I, think, I, I think that's I think it was during, and this would be after. Oh, okay. Um, and, and for the I, record, that's, a, that's if, a good distinction. For the record, we don't we um, don't endorse either of those uh, unless no, unless no. she's into it. In which case, you know, cats and ball peen hammers, whatever. We don't. <laughs> Um, well, so yeah. Which, which definition did you base this? I, if I had to choose from those three, I would probably wait. Wait. Go wait. With wait. Wait. Ladder. Wait. Wait. If, if oh. it's not if you have to choose, you you are definitely <laughs> choosing. Like you have. Are you, you saying okay. that there is a fourth option here? I don't. I don't. Well, I don't see a fourth option. Uh, <laughs> well, I I would say it was probably uh, closer to the latter. Um, if this would kids out there. Take this as an example of why you need to think about your internet handle, <laughs> even if you're years away from actually doing anything, because it stays with you. Because this was one of those things uh, on forums since like the early 2000s, I've always been Breck. But when I joined Chat Realm, I started posting as Brack, but there was somebody else that was Brack at that time, and then it was like, eh. But that was about the point where I got, I picked up a PlayStation 3, and I had to set up an account with PlayStation, which I ended up never using. Um, <laughs> and Brack was taken, and I went through a million things. Nothing worked. I just ended up typing in Poodle Puncher. It worked. I said, fine. At that same time, I signed up for Twitter, and there was a tool that would post your gameplay stats to Twitter. So, Poodle Puncher. Um, I, you know, yeah. Nice. And then now, now <laughs> I, I'm I'm willing to give that uh, th there are certain times when, especially late at night, because that's usually when you set up a game system is late at night. Mm -hmm. You're setting up a game system. It's late at night. You've knocked back, you know, maybe a six pack or so, a couple of shots of Fireball. I mean, you're you're not in the best of mindsets, <laughs> right? And, and 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 you're sitting there and you're sipping on your sour milk because why not? And you're thinking through life, and you're like, you know, I need to come up with a name. I'm I'm I'm, I'm flipping through all the little memories I have. How far back did you have to reach through the Rolodex of life before you hit Poodle Puncher and said? Try. Well, it was about an hour. So you remember the PlayStation 3, there was no hop on your phone and type it in. You're sitting there on the gamepad and a keyboard that's not in the right order, clicking around, no. Click around, no. Click around, <laughs> no. And eventually, it's like, fine, it's got to be something long. And then Poodle, I just threw in Poodle. And it, and it was like, Nope, that's taking night. Well, I hate poodles. Okay. Corgi's rule. Poodles, meh. So I was like, all right. I, I could picture a corgi just beating the crap out of a poodle. So <laughs> and then I put that in and it took and I was like, okay. Well, I, I never planned on using the name on the live or anything. So and then that PS3 about six months later, I was like, I never played this thing and I got rid of it. But like I said, that was about the time I started kind of lurking in chat realm. And then so then my name was registered on IRC. And it's like, I'm not going to do anything. I'm never going to be like visible. So who cares? <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> so and even if, <laughs> So even if you have no aspirations to do anything where anybody will actually know who you are. Choose wisely. <laughs> that is a, uh, that's, I mean, the, the, lessons for life. So s since you are kind of somebody on the internet now, especially in Diamond Club, let's go ahead and talk <laughs> a little bit about that. You are part of the VOD squad. Tell us, yeah. tell us a little bit about, about that. How'd that come about? Why'd you decide to do this particular show? Well, um, I had been wanting to do a show for a long time mainly because 
I, I don't know if anybody out there is like me, but I'll listen to a podcast about a topic that I'm passionate about or that I have actual thoughts about. And you listen to the people and you can't feed back. You can't give them feedback. And if they don't say something, they miss or they completely miss a topic or, you know, or you completely disagree with what they're saying. I find myself screaming at the radio like, ah, and it was like, frustrating because I, I had nobody in my, you know, immediate vicinity to discuss this stuff with. So we talk about uh, streaming devices, uh, streaming hardware, uh, uh, and then like content providers. So uh, essentially, uh, it we uh, wanted, I, I wanted to start a project that was kind of a complement to Cord Killers, not a, uh, not a uh, competitor. Because with Court Killers, they give out, uh, Brian and Tom, they give out so much awesome information, but they've got to pack so much stuff into like a single episode, they can't really spend any enough time on any one subject. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, is we will take a topic like uh, Fire TV, the platform, um, or Amazon Prime as a content provider service, and actually talk between the four of us at length until, you know, I mean, some there, there's like at least one or two episodes that we made went like two hours yeah. just because we, you know, still had stuff to say, yeah, but, uh, sir, your guys show the deep dive. On it, exactly. The and video. that's actually what, uh, that's actually what someone had suggested. We call the main topic section is deep dive. Wow. Um, but, and I, I have to give a huge thanks to Brian and Tom because uh, I wrote them a letter and I just said, hey, um, I don't expect you to, but if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, basically read this uh, personal ad for me. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's, and that, that's how I got to know Jackie because she was like one of the first people to respond. Um, and there was a whole herd of people that, uh, that responded and I didn't want it to be just like uh, a popularity contest. Uh, oh, I'm just going to pick like one or two of you. And we just kind of let it uh, whittle down organically based on schedule and uh, interest. And, you know, Kuhan, if you're out there, uh, wish we could have, uh, you know, made it work out with his, your schedule, but uh, definitely want to have him on sometime. Um, and the, yeah, and, and like I said, uh, Jackie, uh, was, uh, instrumental in helping us get going because there was so much I didn't know. <laughs> right, right. I didn't even know how, how do we put, you know, I've got X split, but how do we put stuff on diamond club TV? And Jackie's the one that, you know, open or open that initial dialogue with, uh, like Sergeant Muffin and different people and, yeah, it, it's been crazy. And for anybody yeah. listening that doesn't know who Jackie Hearn is, shame on you. Um, How does anybody listening not know she, who Jackie she's, Hearn is? She's, she's, she's the unofficial queen of, of Diamond Club. Um, she's just pretty awesome. She runs half the shit around here. And she's so, <laughs> and I mean this in the kindest of ways, as a, self, as a, as a fellow self-deprecator, she is one of the most self-deprecating people I know, but she does so much. And a uh, big shout She's out to Jackie Hearn. She's also one of the most selfless, though. Like, we have oh, kind yeah. of like a wall of heroes on uh, RMP, and she is definitely amongst them. That's Oh, new. yeah, definitely. So, yeah. Uh, but <clears throat> So, Vod Squad is not the only thing you do on DiamondClub.tv. What else you got going on? Oh, we uh, started doing uh, what I affectionately call a movie party, where it was, uh, it was based on something that I had noticed uh, Sergeant Muffin was doing where he would have like uh, whoever was in chat, he'd pull them into a, or give them a link to a private video and they'd like watch stuff like top gear or whatever. And, you know, just, but I wanted to do something that was inclusive because with on a uh, club TV, we, you don't want to be broadcasting stuff that could bring legal ramifications to the channel because we love our clubhouse mm -hmm. and we don't want anything bad to happen to it. So that's why, and I was like, well, I, this would be fun to do. And uh, back in November, as just kind of a last minute experiment, I was like, eh, let, let's get together, you know, see who shows up and 
uh, we'll watch a movie and and then yeah, it ended up going for like that first stream went for like four hours past the the movie, and I said, okay, the, this is fun. Let's uh, keep doing it. Yeah, it's a good time. I think was I. I I think I was part of the first one that you did. Uh, or I think you you might have popped in. I don't know if you're on the first one or I know you were definitely there for the second one. Um, okay, maybe that's yeah. what I'm thinking of. But um, yeah, Sassien joined me reluctantly for I, I guess it was the second one. She joined me reluctantly, and then now she is like part of the crew. Like, <laughs> oh she, no, she's, she's like she's like the one the one person I can absolutely count on being there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's a good time. Yeah, if, it, yeah, if it, someone has has participated in in chat room movie night or Diamond Club movie night, uh, definitely do that. It, it's a blast. What is it? Once a month? Yeah, we've been doing it once a month. Um, and then I've been basically just kind of finding the weekend that works best for me. Try and try to schedule around having my kids and stuff, you know. And so that way I can, you know, if, if like we need to stream till five in the morning, I can, you know. Right. <laughs> this uh for the, for those that are that are longtime followers of the show, well, I guess like last two months. <laughs> um, when I was sick on New Year's, the thing that that as I was starting to feel better, what I was doing is actually watching their stream while watching the original stream, and they were offset by about maybe ten seconds. So I'd watch the show, and then they would talk about it, and it was the most awkward thing ever. And it was actually. I, I don't know. It was it was great. It was it was so much fun, and it was the movies were so <laughs> shitty. And on that same token, thank you so much for carrying that second movie through when we had uh, some technical difficulties with one of our streamers. You made it happen. It's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Well, and for that, I mean, it's not like I did anything. I sat right here, and I watched a movie. I just let other people watch me watch a movie. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 you know, but no, but it was uh, no, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, hey Kent. Yep. I think it's about time for this. You've got sixty seconds. Get your mind right. It's time for hot takes on the Ritual Misery podcast. Uh -oh. All right. For those that don't know how this goes, I'm going to give out a topic. So, for example, I will say rush hour traffic. Am I right? And then Poodle has about ten seconds to rant and rave or say whatever the hell he wants to say about it and then he will hear this sound and that means he shuts the hell up and he gets his next topic goes for about a minute are you ready poodle uh let's do it <laughs> i mean can ed you really wood. be ready <laughs> ed wood am i right ed wood that that guy he is a he, he, he's a very famous producer or director for making really bad movies <laughs> Although the Jimmy or the Johnny Depp portrayal of him was very good. If you haven't seen that movie, go out and see it. Shoveling snow, am I right? I refuse to shovel snow. I live in this state reluctantly in Minnesota where snow is like the the state plant or something like that. But <laughs> I, I will pay anybody to come do it. Uh, I, I ain't doing it. The Vikings, am I right? See, I don't care about sports ball. I I I had my own uh, crappy team in the San Diego Chargers. I didn't need to root for a crappy team up here, but now there's no San Diego Chargers. I don't have to root for them anymore either. IPv6, am I right? IPv6 has the potential to be okay once people kind of actually start using it. Um, it, it's really been trumped up the need for it because there is plenty of IPv4 addresses out there. And if you don't know what the hell we're talking about, look it up. But and until you have a <laughs> the Ritual Misery podcast, am I right? Ritual Misery podcast, dude. You know, I did not watch this show for the longest time because I thought it was a wrestling podcast <laughs> because the picture that shows up on your album art. Amos looks just like this guy I follow on Twitter that does wrestling stuff until Jackie came on back in September. And I was like, why is she going on a wrestling podcast? <laughs> and then that's why I, I watched one episode and I was like, why have I not been watching this for like ever? And I immediately became a patron because why not? 
you know? No, it was awesome. I, I let that go. I let that go way past the 10 seconds. I, 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 I don't know story. what you're talking about. I, I, the, no, I, the, I this, guy, I this guy, right this guy right here, a wrestling podcast. This guy right here, and this guy right here. There's no way they could have a decent podcast. There's not a chance. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> well, and the only reason I didn't tune in is because I'm not a wrestling fan. You know, I, I figured it was essentially what one nine hundred wrestling is now. Mm. But yeah, well, like, that's yeah. funny you say that because I. I had this dream. Oh my god! About a Kent, year ago Kent had doing this fucking, a wrestling podcast with Jury. Kent had, this, <laughs> he, he, Kent had this half chub on this idea of having a wrestling podcast with Jury for like six or eight months, and this just never, never developed it, and never asked, and now it's gone. And then Dills <laughs> did. Yeah. yeah. And, well, yeah, and well, and the thing is, like, I knew Justin wanted to have a wrestling podcast. Like for years, he's been wanting to do that, and. I was a huge, huge, huge wrestling nerd, but now it's like once a month or maybe once every other month I'll catch some wrestling. See? So it's like there's no way, no way I'd be able to keep up with the product enough to to actually do a show on it. Oh, that's 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 just that's just too bad. Yep. <laughs> oh man. So real quick, Poodle, I, I did want to ask you about your Navy career. You are a ten year Navy veteran. You got out um, about Most a days. decade ago. Yep, right? literally. Um, I would have, if they would let me stay in, I would have retired last June at 20. Um, you know, it, I I miss it. That was uh, it was some great time. Uh, the the people that I served with are still some of my closest friends, even if even though I haven't seen them in like 15 years. You know, we still talk from here time to time and we still see each other on Facebook and you know it's like we you know I could if I go to Ohio I've got places to stay and people to hang out with or you know pick a state yes and yeah uh in some cases pick a country oh absolutely <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah that's that's one of my favorite things about my military career was the travel um you know I, I one of the reasons that I joined was to see the world and by god did I get a chance to see the world oh yeah I mean uh in my first four years, I went to Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal, uh, Turkey, uh, Croatia, uh, Dubai, Bahrain. I mean, basically everywhere other than northern Atlantic, like uh, England area. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, and it was it was amazing. Uh, first trip going out there when I was 19, it took a little while to realize don't just go out and get plastered because you miss everything. Then uh, after I learned that lesson, it was like I had a lot of fun, you know, met a lot of really cool people. I had a lot of really cool adventures. Uh, and, what was your what was your job? Uh, damage control. So we're the fire department on the ship. Uh, <laughs> in addition to being the fire department, which, yes, to answer the question that comes up, there are fires all the time, uh, mostly because of stupid people. Doing stupid things. You get that um, in the Navy. Same as on land. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, part of our job was uh, we we owned and maintained all the firefighting equipment, uh, which includes the flight deck uh, uh, washdown uh, system. Uh, and then we also had to train the rest of the crew how to do our job. Because when, in a major catastrophe, we're the first line of defense, we're the first to die. Everybody else has to know how to pick up where we left off to keep the plane or the boat afloat long enough for the captain to get off or right. whoever else is important. Um, but, or, uh, or, or to survive. Yeah. I, you know, it's <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I can tell you, uh, there was uh, one time we had a fire in the O2N2 plant. Now, for those of you that aren't mm. familiar, O2 nice. is oxygen, N2 is nitrogen. So there's a. Uh, plant on the ship two of them actually they make liquid oxygen and liquid nitrogen and there was a fire like right next to the tanks in the control room and yeah you want to talk about adrenaline um that was so much fun uh, but, I, uh i have i have a, a a locks story for you after the show's over okay. that uh that you'll, you'll probably get a kick out of i can't i don't know if i've told you this or not but yeah it's, it's pretty entertaining so remind me of that yeah, so 
Um, yeah, everybody stick around for the post show because th- some of our best stories and some of our funniest stuff actually happens in the pre and post show. And um, if you run to catch the real scoop, cruise on over to ritualmisery.com slash Patreon. And, uh, or no, it's patreon.com slash ritual misery. Yeah, that way. Uh, that one. It, I, think yes. it, I think it actually works both ways, but I don't know. Um, cruise on over to there and, uh, and, and, you know, kick, kick us a little something and we'll, uh, make it worth your while. Uh, at least I yep. hope so. You'll have access to the, the pre shows, the post shows, whatever, uh, extra little bits that we can put together and throw out for just our patrons. We do try to make it worthwhile. And I think, the last month or two have had some of our our best stuff, uh, patron only content. So so head over there, check that out, kick us a buck. That would be awesome. Um, in fact, and uh, damn it, it's not gonna let me. You son of a like websites, man. <laughs> Am I right? <sighs> God. Oh boy, they, they just pissed me. No, off. it's those those gremlins. Those beta gremlins are starting to haunt us again. <laughs> I thought we. I thought we're we're not still in beta. Uh, we 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 are we are not. Um, you you shut up, you. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I just want to. I want to throw a quick shout out because here recently, and uh, you know, this is totally just us. If, if the website would work, 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 you fucker. That's too much to ask, man. But apparently, apparently, it's far too much to ask. Uh, within the last. This is where you go stretch. stretch. <laughs> Within the last few months, uh, we have ha- we have had a, an increase in our patronage, and I just want to do a shout out to those people. But apparently, it's not letting me sort it by people. Um, the ones that I know of, uh, Crunchy has hopped on our Patreon, and we think she's awesome regardless, and just a little bit more awesome now. Uh, Jackie <laughs> hopped on, Jenny hopped on, Brett hopped on, uh, Patrick hopped on, like. These are people that are getting everything out of Ritual Misery, and we appreciate it so much, and they're awesome. So so what I'm gathering from this is you are having people on your show so that they will then start giving to you. That is exactly... you. So look, more, look, those no. of you out there, <laughs> if you are not currently per- giving to their Ritual Misery for their uh, Patreon, drop them a line. They'll bring you on the show. But in return, I think you, you, I think it's the other way around. Donation. I think it's the other way around. I think we are having people on the show that don't normally watch the show, and then all of a sudden they're introduced to the ritual misery, and they're like, "Oh my god, I got to have more of this." <laughs> there, oh, and then okay. some people, some people are just like, "You know what? I'm in a place where I can throw a buck a, a week at them, and you know, yeah, hey, and, it, and it's really cool because we use we use the the Patreon money we use to make this show better. So we've we bought mics. Um, uh, some software. I think Amos had to get some uh software upgrade for something. Um, this money is being used to get our shirts made. It's being used to get the stickers out yep. to people. Um, the giveaways that we're gonna have at our show in Austin, it's it's funded by the Patreon. Yep. So it's it's kind of like a give to us. We're gonna give it right back. So. And uh, in, in fact, we actually have this is a little bit more in depth. But if we have a we have a PayPal, and if you want to kick something out, you're going to be in, in at South by, and you want to help us make the show better. Um, there's a PayPal. Go ahead and throw a little little cash in there, and that's going to go directly towards making uh, awesome stuff for everybody at the show. Um, hey Kent, there is one thing we have left to do, man. Yeah. So we stumbled upon uh, something. It was a. Uh, Damn it! I don't have it pulled up. Amos, what, what did we stumble upon? <laughs> <laughs> we stumbled upon a manifesto back when, uh, yeah, back when Poodle Puncher was was younger. Uh, he he knew that right. movies were going to take a long, a, a large part in his life, and he wanted to write down kind of almost a mission statement, but more of a teenage mission statement. Like, here's the stuff that we need and we like, and, and kind of like where movies should go. And, uh, and Ken's going to read it uh, here in just a second, but this is, I mean, it's, it's even written in like crayon. Like we're not sure how old you were. Oh, but... I still write everything in crayon. See, <laughs> so it, it, this, work. this could have been yesterday. We don't know. This could be like a compilation <laughs> of tweets. We don't know. So, um, Ken, why don't you go ahead and read this, uh, this poodle puncher manifesto. All right, so yeah, uh, 
it's hard to read through the the crayon. There's like uh, some some words are capitalized where it should be lowercase, and it's it's crazy. Okay, uh, so a couple of the letters are probably backwards. That's yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, there, there's there are definite signs of dyslexia in here. Uh, <laughs> you might want to get that checked. All right, so here it is. Here it is. In recent years, there have been too many disaster movies in which tall info blocks catch on fire. The best dinosaurs come to life, and huge cockroaches attack people in the ocean making you afraid to get out your Ubuntu in the morning. Movie fans ask, why can't we have more amazing pictures like It's a Wonderful Swag, Gone with the Smur, or Mr. Gargamel Goes to Chat Realm? These films made you feel plastered all over. These same fans also ask why we can't have more funny films with comedians such as Laurel and Gru and Abbott and Fitz. Mm -hmm. These long performers gave us great slapstick stats that still make <laughs> that still make our nuggets ache from laughing. I, and and you know it's it's fortuitous that you would write something in there that actually included the great comedians in the chat room right now, Grew and Fitz. That's well, that's because uh, I remember I wrote this two weeks ago while I was in chat realm uh, during I think it was Night Attack post show, but. Uh... Yeah, See, yeah, and, I, I remember and now that. it just makes sense. Now it's all coming together. It makes yeah, sense. Yeah, wow, right, this absolutely. is. I mean, this is really deep stuff, man. Uh, uh, where did you? Uh, wh what what effect did Gone with the Smurf have on you when you were younger? Well, you know, I've always been actually been anti Smurf. I think that was a uh, uh, topic uh, or title suggestion because Gargamel has been my hero. Gargamel. Growing up, and Oscar the Grouch were they were both my hero, yeah. and they I modeled my life after them. Yeah, and, and uh, I mean, the, and the, the, you, so like you followed black, you followed in Gargamel's footsteps when uh, when you saw Gargamel goes to chat realm, and, and well, here you are, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. See? Absolutely. It's um, amazing. And you know, I I would normally be in all black, uh, like my monk robe, except the problem is I learned that uh, when I wear black. I just become a floating head uh, with now, my black chair. Now, so. now I'm I'm calling bullshit once again. I want to hear uh, now. Now you've seen you've seen Gargamel goes to chat realm like like dozens of times. I'm sure. No, well, I, I want to hear. I want to hear. I want to hear your best Gargamel line from that movie. It was those damn dirty Smurfs get in my pot. That's yes, my favorite. That's, line. Uh, yeah, it's it's all about the pot. It's clearly all about the pot. <laughs> hey, um, well, he, people forget that Gargamel wanted to eat the Smurfs. That yeah. was the whole point. Yep, yep, and yeah. and, and he liked pot even with uh, without Smurfs. Well, um, yeah, I we're, mean, we're gonna, him and Azrael just hanging out, you know, long winter night. <laughs> yeah, anytime you got a cat that talks to you and gives you attitude, um, it makes you wonder if there really was a cat or if there really were Smurfs. It, it was probably some really well. No, I was gonna say it was probably some really good. Well, yeah. What, what, if, what really if he wasn't? When, what if he wasn't wandering around the forest trying to find Smurfs? He was actually wandering around the forest trying to find they buds. They lived in those mushrooms. That's that I'm pretty sure yeah. he was eating. Yeah, he was eating those he saw mushrooms. The Smurfs until he, he looked was, under the mushrooms. He was eating. Wait, he was eating the mushrooms, looking for buds. And talking to his cat. This dude was clearly just stoned. Because we did clearly see Azrael interact with the Smurfs, so that does call into question the actual uh, validity of or existence of the Smurfs. Because if Azrael was a figment of his imagination or a hallucination, then the Smurfs would be too. Oh my gosh. So, uh, 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 deconstructing self, Gargamel. That's self, my next podcast. Self-validating illusions. There you go. Uh -huh. That's going to be my TED Talk, my the real Clyde Harvey <laughs> TED Talk. Uh, well, when when you do that TED Talk, man, how are people going to know about it? Uh, I will probably uh, throw that out on Twitter uh, to Chat Realm. It's at Poodle Puncher, just as it sounds, all one word. Uh, if you want to uh, follow my other shows, uh, that's at The Vod Squad on Twitter. Uh, we go live every Wednesday night uh, at 9 p.m. Central. And these jerks decided to move right after we uh, provided them a lead in. Um, <laughs> and then also uh, every uh, like once a month, we're going to we're doing those movie parties. Uh, so that's at DC movie party on uh, Twitter for the latest skinny. Uh, you know. All right. Awesome. Uh, Kent, where can people find you, man? 
Yeah, I've been pretty active on Twitter lately. Check me out. I'm at RM underscore Del Noche. Another place you might want to follow me is on Untapped. I am Del Noche on there. That's got all of my uh, latest like quick shot beer reviews. Uh, if you want the full, the full Monty, I guess, if, of my beer reviews, go to ratebeer.com and look up username Del Noche. What about you, Amos? Um, I have not been active on Twitter lately because too much in the world has pissed me off and I'm not allowed to talk about it. So uh, if you want to come on by and encourage me to speak more of my mind about the things I can say uh, on the internet, cruise on by uh, Twitter and go to at Ethan Kane. I'm there. E-T-H-A-N-C-A-I-N-E. It's confusing. I don't care. And that's where I'm at. That's the only one I have time for, so screw it. And, of course, you can find everything about the show uh, if you just follow at Ritual Misery on the Twitter and you'll find out all the cool stuff that's going on. Um, real quick, before we say anything else, there's one thing that we really, really need to cover. Uh, my podcasting hero and I th- maybe Ken's, Tom Merritt, recently released a book, Pilot X. It's available on pre-order. We'll have links in the show notes. If you want some science fiction in your life, If you want to support great podcasters, even when they're not podcasting, if you want to help the the dreams of a 40-something-year-old man, I think, be fulfilled, cruise on by and find Pilot X on Amazon or on, uh, oh, shite, I can't remember. Ink shares. Ink shares, there we go. Ink shares. (laughs) Buy it. It's 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 180 pages of just pure good science fiction. Uh, go do that. That's that's the what's happening in chat room and in Diamond Club this week. Uh, and it, go ahead. I was gonna say, and even if you don't read, pick it up because the cover is just really cool to look at. It, Put it, it actually on a is. Shelf it actually is. And people just be like, "Wow, that's amazing." It's <laughs> get plugged. <laughs> it really is pretty good, um, and and an audio book is coming out as well. So even if you don't read, if you just want to hear, have somebody talk to you, go ahead and do that. Um, so you can uh, you can catch everything we're we're doing at ritualmisery dot com. Cruise on by there, see all the stuff, help our patron, um, find out more about our schedule, all that kind of stuff. We want to give a big shout out to Kevin McLeod for helping us with the theme music. Um, for Kent, for Poodle Punch, and for me, it's been your Ritual Misery podcast. Yeah. Oh. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> fine so show, we- gentlemen, fine show. We made it to an hour. Yeah, we did. Uh, as Sasian was pointing out in the chat room, we were actually a few minutes over, but yeah, like yeah, only a couple though, like like five minutes maybe at the most.